Okay, we've got our uh, lower unit in the stand now. Um, we have a stand. You can uh, clamp it to the side of your bench. Um, I did that for years actually. If you're doing this at home, um, one way to do it is uh, hardware. If you've got a bench with a lip that hangs over the edge, you can put a clamp on there. Uh, I'm not just move this over so you can see what I'm doing here. There we go. And hang that onto your bench, and then you can clamp it from under your bench uh, onto your cav plate there, and that'll hold your lower unit. So it's a little bit dicey. You've got to be careful that you don't knock it out of the clamp, but you can uh, you can set it up like that. I did it for years, um, but we have a a proper stand for it now. It makes life a whole lot easier when we're doing all the rebuilds and replacing seals and stuff like that. So, hold it nice and sturdy in whatever position you need it to be in. So, this is our water pump housing. These are a plastic housing on these. Do not want to overheat them. Always make sure you're connected to a hose or the motor's in the water when you're running it up. Do not run it dry. And melt that whole housing. It gets even more expensive. Like I said, this boat's got 12 hours on it, 18 months. Uh, since I saw it last, uh, I expect the water pump and color is going to be just fine, but we need to inspect it anyway. So we're going to roll this over and have a look inside at the, uh, at the housing. This one's in very nice shape. Sometimes on the salt water, often on the salt water boats, we'll get uh, quite a, a salt buildup uh, in there. Be little lines of salt that we need to scrape away, but this one's nice and clean. No scoring, no damage. Now the water pump impeller looks pretty good there, but I'm going to slide it right out so I can inspect the bottom side too. I'll get my glasses so I can see properly. I'll just slide that off. I'm going to check the condition of the key. This uh, is a, a loose fitting key. Sometimes they're really tight in there and they, they won't fall out. Uh, and you have to really pry them out. This one's quite loose, not loose. It's just, it's a perfect fit. So it's, you can slide it out of there. Gonna, we need to be really careful making sure that that doesn't get knocked out of place when we put the water pump impeller back on. But it's in good condition. There's a little bit of uh, salt buildup on there. I'll zoom in here and see if you can get a, a good look at it. Uh, so not sure if it's focusing or not. There's some, uh, some rough ridges there. So I'm going to scrape them off. I found a razor blade works really well for that. You can hear me hitting that crusty build up in there. Otherwise, this customer flushes his motor quite regularly, which he should, and it's in very nice condition in here, looking good. Now we're going to have a look at the impeller here. I'll show you what I'm looking for. This one's in good condition. Um, we have little sealing ridges on these Yamaha impellers. They run out the tips of the impellers there. 
um, oftentimes you'll see them sort of uh, torn away. These little ridges here, uh, you'll see them torn away a bit, more so on the bottom, I don't know why, but uh, these ones are all in great condition, that's as good as new. Uh, it's all still soft and flexible. Um, it's laid over a little bit, but uh, it's not too bad. It's, uh, this one's going to see another season. We'll replace it next year for the customer. Now, this shaft's a little bit, got a little bit of build up of stuff on there, so I'm just going to get some scotch break. Clean that up a bit so the impeller goes back on nice and easy. And I just bumped my key there and almost knocked it out. If it hits the floor, it might go missing. So I'm going to slide that right out of there and put it on the bench for now. back in. So that key's in there now. And the impeller goes back together, I lubricate it. It doesn't need a huge amount of lubrication. You can use dish soap, um, you can use uh, um, a, a glycerin, um, or um, we use uh, this Easy Slide. Uh, it's a silicone-based synthetic lubricant. Uh, don't use regular grease or engine oil. Uh, it will attack the rubber and cause it damage. Um, use a synthetic silicone-based grease. And we'll just put a little bit on that bottom plate. on each of the uh, fins there. These impellers have a top and a bottom. Uh, it's pretty simple to see. That's the, uh, let's see how close we can get here. On the bottom here, we've got the notch for the keyway. I'll just turn that right over and you can see that there is no notch for the keyway. You can't put this on upside down. It won't, it will not go over the key. I'm going to show you what happens if the key falls out. So when you're sliding the impeller down, I'm going to put the impeller down on there, and you can push that key right out of there. Let's take this key out. I'll just show you exactly what just happened there. Zoom in there. See the key down there? Now if, the mo if this was turned around the other way, that key could have fallen down the water inlet there and you wouldn't have even noticed it. We see this an awful lot where people say, oh, I just changed my water pump impeller, but it's overheating. Uh, they've knocked the key out and it's dr probably dropped down there and they didn't even know about it. So when that happens, you put your water pump impeller in there and it looks like it's all good. Oh, look, it's turning. But if I hold it, I can turn the drive shaft there and it's not turning the impeller. You won't even notice it when you're putting it together. So we're just going to slide that back up. I'm going to put that key in. I'm going to take this right off so that I can identify. So there's my slot for the key and behind that blade. Now, very carefully, I've got my finger on the key there so that I can feel it. 
checking it as I go down to make sure I haven't pushed the key out. Now, I can't turn the shaft while I'm holding that impeller. So now I know the key is in there and that it will pump water when I start it back up again. I've inspected the housing. The impeller is lubricated. The only other thing I need to do, my trusty favorite grease. And grease the threads. The grease is a sealant in this case. This is what we're doing it for. We're doing it to seal the moisture, the salt water out of the threads. Um, that prevents the corrosion between the stainless steel bolt and the aluminum housing. Don't use never seize, anti seize compound. Um, it has, uh, they all have some sort of metal in them. Um, the brown ones have copper in them. If you used copper-based anti-seize, never seize on these bolts and put this motor in salt water, probably wouldn't last a year without rotting the housing away. The copper is such an active material in there. Um, but that aside, any anti-seize that has metal in it, uh, any never seize compound that has metal in it, which they all do, uh, is going to have, give you dissimilar metals in a salt water environment which is going to give you galvanic corrosion. So don't use never seize, just use plain old ordinary grease. So my bolts are all greased up, my impeller is lubricated, the, uh, the stainless steel insert, sometimes this uh, stainless steel insert will pop out, you want to make sure that it's seated all the way in there. And we're just going to put a little bit of that. And then there's an O-ring seal in the bottom of this housing. I like a little bit of my silicone grease on that seal there too. Just helps it to flow properly. And the trick to getting your water pump impeller in there is turn your drive shaft. They turn clockwise when you look down from the top of them. Same way as the motor. Hold your housing in place. Turn your drive shaft and push down on the housing. And it'll just pop right into place, just like that. Procedure is exactly the same for changing your water pump impeller. You'd just be using a new one. We're reusing this one because it's in good condition still. <clears throat> Again, you want to inspect your impeller every year. That way you know it's in good condition for the season. The number one killer of outboard motors is overheating. Uh, that's generally what ruins your outboard motor. So inspecting your water pump and pellet oops, once a year is really cheap insurance to make sure it's in good condition. So just snugging these up, all four of them, turn them down even. So they're all just snug now. This is a plastic housing, remember that when you're tightening it down. So now that when they're snug, I just give the shaft a little bit of a turn just to make sure the water pump impeller is not pinched under there before I snug this down all the way. Couldn't tell you what the torque spec is on this. Not super tight because it's a plastic housing. Okay. So that's our water pump housing. A couple other things to note while we're in here. The uh, this is our pitot tube. <coughs> we see this an awful lot, um, particularly around here because we got lots of wood in the water. Um, the pickup, let's take it out. So the pickup for the water, for the pitot tube here is just here. Can we see it there? Yes, there it is. That little tiny hole right there, water pressure goes in there, straight up the side, up your pitot tube, activates your speedometer. 
um, either mechanically or electronically if you have a sensor, uh, an electric dash, electronic dash. Uh, that little hole in the very front will get blocked up. So we always take our airline here. Let me see what I do. Yeah. And we'll just blow through there and make sure it's clear. This one's clear. Usually I use a, a little tiny drill bit, a little bit smaller than a sixteenth, uh, and drill the wood out of there because it's usually a, a little chunk of wood that's jammed up in there. doesn't take much. Um, the other things we do while we're here is uh, there's dowel pins that locate the lower unit. There's one there and there's one up here. Um, I make sure there's no corrosion on them. Uh, oftentimes I'll get the wire brush and buff them up. Just a little scrub with this wire brush. These ones are nice and clean, looking good. A uh, little bit of grease on them. You want the grease on the sides of them. Not on top. What can I show you? Well, there's a dowel there. Come back a little bit, see if it'll focus. So there's our dowel there. If you get grease on top of that, it's going to hydraulic lock on, in the hole that that dowel goes into, and you won't be able to. Uh, you, you'll probably crack the housing trying to uh, put it all together. The um, but the grease on the side allows you to take it apart next year. Okay. A little bit of grease on our shift splines. And up the top of our drive shaft here. Zoom up, zoom up, zoom up. There we go. So I clean these gro grooves right out, get all the old grease out of there, because that's just the sort of guy I am. No sense having dirty grease in there. There we go. And then, Use proper spline grease, and I can't show it to you because I've cut the uh, cut the tub down so far. Um, but uh, this is uh, uh, a high high pressure grease, um, specifically for the splines, and same as the uh, the dowels. Let me just zoom up here. You want the grease on your splines. You do not want a big lump, and I'll show you what you don't want. Right there, you don't want a big lump of grease on top there. When this shaft goes up into the, uh, the bottom of the crankshaft on the engine, if you've got a bunch of grease in there, you'll get a hydraulic lock. It'll push your crankshaft up and uh, wreak havoc on your uh, thrust bearings. So you want no grease on top, but grease on your splines. And that's that for changing a water pump impeller. Next, we're going to change the gear lube, which is pretty quick and straightforward on this, but I'm going to go through it seeing as we're, uh, we're doing the whole service. So let's uh, change our camera angle and stuff, and we'll do that. 